Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Cloud Native Security Con North America 2023. Obviously CUBE's coverage with our CUBE Center uh, report. We're not there on the ground, but we have folks in our CUBE alumni there. We have entrepreneurs there. Of course, we want to be there in person, but we're remote. We've got Ben Hirschberg, CTO and co-founder of Armo, a Cloud Native Security startup well positioned in this industry. He's there in Seattle. Ben, thank you for coming on and sharing uh, what's going on with theCUBE. Yeah, it's great to be here, John. So uh, we had written you guys up on Silicon Angle. Congratulations on your, your momentum and traction. But let's first get into what's going on there on the ground. What are some of the key trends? What's the most important story being told there? What is the vibe? What's the most important story right now? So I think I, I would like to start here with the, I think the most important thing was that I think the event is very successful. Okay, uh, usually you know the Cloud Native Security Day usually was part of KubeCon in the previous years, and now you know it became its own uh, uh, conference of its own. And uh, it really kudos to all the organizers. Okay, who brought this up in actually in a short time, and and we were it wasn't really clear how many people will turn up. But at the end, okay, we see a really nice turn up, okay, and 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 really great uh, uh, talks and keynotes around here. Um, I think that one of the biggest trends, okay, which is haven't started like in this conference, but already we're talking for a while, is is supply chain, okay? Supply chain is, is security. I think it's right now the biggest trend in the talks, okay, in the keynotes. Um, and I think that we are start to see companies, big companies, okay, who are adopting themselves into this direction. Okay, there is a clear uh, industry need. Uh, there is a clear problem, uh, and I think that that the cloud native security teams are coming up with with tooling around it. I think for right now we see more tools than adoption, but the adoption is always right following okay the tooling um and and i think it already proves itself so we have just a very interesting talk this morning uh about uh, the open ssl vulnerability which was i think around uh, halloween um which came out and everyone thought that it's going to be uh, a critical issue for the whole uh, cloud native and internet infrastructure and at the end it turned out to be a lesser problem but the reason why I think it was understood that to be a lesser problem real soon was that because people started to uh, use S bombs, uh, store uh, software composition information in the environment, so security teams could look into look up in their systems. Okay, what where they are using OpenSSL, which version they are using. It became really soon real clear that this version is not uh, adopted by a wide array of of software out there. So. Uh, the attack surface is relatively small, um, and I think it already proved itself that uh, the direction okay of everyone is talking about. Yeah, I, we we agree. We're very bullish on this move from the cloud native um, foundation CNCF to do the security conference. You know, Amazon Web Services has reinvent. That's their big show. Uh, but they also have reinforced a security show. So clearly, they work together. I like the decoupling. Very co cohesive. Um, but you guys are, have Kubescape, so Kubernetes security. Talk about the, the conversations that are there and that you're hearing around why the different event, what's different around KubeCon and Cloud Native Con than this Cloud Native Security Con. It's not called KubeSecCon, it's called Cloud Native Security Con. What's the difference? Are people confused? Is it clear? What's the difference between the two shows? What's, what are you hearing? So I think that, that, you know, there is a good question. Okay, where is Cloud Native? Uh, 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 um, Computing Foundation came from, okay, and it was in, uh, obviously, everyone knows that it was somewhat coupled, okay, with the adoption of Kubernetes, okay? Uh, it was a clear understanding in the industry that, that, that there are different efforts where the industry needs to come together without looking, uh, uh, be very vendor specific, okay? And, and, and try to sort out a lot of issues, okay, in order to enable adoption and to grow, uh, bring great value. And, and I think that uh, that the main difference here, okay, between KubeCon 
and the Cloud Native Security Conference is really the focus, okay? And not just on Kubernetes, but, but the ec whole ecosystem behind that, okay? The way we are delivering software, the way we are monitoring software, uh, and all, where Kubernetes is only um, just, you know, uh, uh, maybe the biggest Log in the system, but 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 you know uh, uh, just one of the others, and it it is it gives a great overview of what you have in the whole ecosystem. Yeah, I think it's a good call. I would add that what I'm hearing too is that um, security is so critical to the business model of every company. It's so mainstream. The hackers have a great business model. They make money. Their costs are lower than the revenue. So the business of hacking and breaches, ransomware, all over the place is so successful that they're playing offense, everyone's playing defense. So it's about time we can get focus to really be faster and more, more nimble and agile on solving some of these security uh, challenges in open source. Yeah. Um, so I think that to me is a great focus. And so I give total props to, to the CNCF. I call it the event operating system. You know, you got, you got the security group over here decoupled from the main kernel, but they work together. Um, yeah. Good call. And, and, and so this brings back up to some of the things that are going on. So I have to ask you, as your startup, as a CTO, you guys have the Kubescape platform. How do you guys fit into the landscape and, and what's different from your tools uh, for Kubernetes environments versus what's out there? So I think that our journey is really interesting, okay, in the solution space because, um, because I think that our mode really tried to understand, okay, where security can meet the actual adoption. Because as you just said, okay, somehow we have to sort out together, okay, how security is going to be automated and integrated in, in its best way. So, uh, Kubescape project started as a uh, as a Kubernetes security posture tool. Okay, just you know when people are really early in their adoption of Kubernetes systems. Okay, uh, they want to understand. Okay, whether the installation is is secure, whether the basic configurations are look okay, and giving them in uh, instant feedback on that, uh, both in live systems and in the CI/CD. Um, this is where Kubescape came from. Okay. And it we started as an open store, it is an open source project because we are big believers of open source, of the power of open source security. And I can, you know, I think maybe this is my first uh, interview when I can say that uh, Kubescape was accepted to, uh, to be a CNCF sandbox project. So Armo is actually donating, okay, the project to, uh, to the CNCF, uh, I think, which is a huge milestone. Uh, and a great way, okay, to further, you know, the adoption of Kubernetes security. And from now on, okay, we want to see where the users, Armo and Kubescape projects want to see where the users are going, okay, in the, their Kubernetes security journey and uh, and help them to automatize, help them to, to implement security more fast in their way, uh, the way the developers are using working. Okay, if you don't mind, I want to just get clarification. What's the difference between the Armo platform and Kubescape? Because you have you have the Kubescape so, sandbox yeah. project and Armo platform. Could you talk about the differences in, sure. in, in, in sure. traffic? Sure, sure. So Kubescape is an open source project and Armo platform is actually a, a managed platform, okay, which runs Kubescape, okay, in the cloud for you because Kubescape is part, uh, it has several parts. Okay, one part is which is running inside the, the Kubernetes cluster on in the CI/CD processes of the user, and there is another part, okay, which we called the backend, okay, where the results are are stored and can be analyzed, okay, uh, uh, further. Uh, so our platform gives you a, a managed way, okay, to run the backend. But I can tell you that that backend is also will be available within a month or two, also for everyone to install our, on their premises as well. So because again, we are an open source company, okay, and we are we want to enable users. So the difference is that Armo platform is a managed uh, uh, platform, okay, behind Kubescape. How does Kubescape differ from closed proprietary sourced solutions? So I there I can tell you that there there are closed proprietary so, uh, uh, solutions okay which are which are very good security solutions but I think that that the main difference if I had to pick okay beyond you know the very specific technicalities is the worldview okay the way we see that the the our user is not the CISO the, our user is not the 
the, uh, necessarily the security team. From our perspective, the user is the DevOps and the developers, okay, who are working on the Kubernetes uh, cluster day to day, and we want to enable them to improve their security. So uh, actually, the, our, our approach is more developer friendly, if, if I would need to define it very shortly. What is this risk calculation score you guys have in Kubescape? That's come up and we cover that in our story. Can you explain to the folks how that fits in? Is it Kubescape, is it the platform and what's the benefit? What's the purpose? So the risk calculation is, is actually um, a score we are giving, okay, to clusters uh, in order for the users to understand where they are standing in the general uh, you know, population, okay? How they are faring, okay, against a perfect uh, hardened cluster. Um, it is based on, on on the number of different tests we are making, okay? Uh, and I don't want to go into you know the very specifics of, of of the mathematical functions, but in general, it takes into account how many functions are are, are failing, security tests are failing in inside your cluster, okay? How many nodes you are having, how many workloads are having, and creating this the, this number which enables you to understand where you are standing in the global in the world. What's the customer value that you guys pitching? What's the what's the pitch for the Armo platform when you go and talk to a customer? Are they like, we need you? Do they come to you? Is, they, is it word of mouth? You guys have a strategy? What's the what's the pitch? What's so appealing so, to the customers? Why are they enthusiastic so John, about you guys? So John, I, I can tell you, I'm maybe it's not so easy to uh, to say the words, but I nearly twenty years in the industry. Okay, <laughs> and uh, and all, I've been always around cyber and the defense in the uh, industry. And I can tell you that I never had, um, you know, this journey where before where I could say that the, the customers are coming to us and that we are pitching to customers. Okay, uh, simply because uh, people want to, this is a very easy tool, very, very easy to use, very understandable. And it very helps uh, the engineers to improve security posture. And, and they are coming to us and they're saying, well, awesome. Okay, uh, how we can like use it? Do you have a graphical interface? And we are we are pointing them to the Armor platform and they are falling in love and coming to us uh, even more. And we can tell you that we have a, a big number of, of, of uh, active users behind the platform itself. You know, one of the things that comes up every time at KubeCon and CloudNativeCon when we're there and we'll be in Amsterdam. So folks watching, you know, what we'll see on site developer productivity is like the number one thing everyone talks about and security um, is so important. It's become by default a blocker or, a, or an anchor or a, or a drag on productivity. This is big, the things that you're mentioning, easy to use, engineering, supporting it, developer adoption. You know, we've always said on theCUBE, developers will be the de facto standards bodies by their choices, because it's it, developers make all the decisions. So if I can go faster and I can have security kind of programmed in, I'm okay. not shifting left. It's just, I'm just having security kind of in there. That's the dream state. Is that what you guys are trying to do here? What's, is, cause that's the Nirvana. Everyone wants to do that. Yeah, yeah. I think your definition is like perfect. Okay, because, because really we had like this for a very long time, we had this world where we decoupled security teams from developers. And and even for sometimes from engineering at all, and and I think for multiple reasons, okay, we are more seeing a big convergence. Okay, the security teams are becoming part of the engineering, and the engineering becoming part of the security. And and as you're saying, okay, the day-to-day -day world, okay, of developers are becoming uh, very uh, tangled up in the good way with with security. So. The, uh, think, about, uh, think about it that today, uh, one of my developers at Armo is uh, uh, is creating a pull request. Okay, he's already, his uh, code is already scanned by security scanners uh, uh, for to, to test for different security problems. Okay, uh, it's already, you know, before he already gets a feedback on his first uh, uh, time where he's sharing his code. And if there is an issue, he already can solve it. And this is just, solving issues much faster, much cheaper, okay? And also you asked me about, uh, you know, the, the, the wipe, okay, uh, in the conference and, and you know, no one can deny, okay, the current economic uh, um, uh, wipe, okay, we have 
and 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 this also relates to security teams and security teams has to be much more efficient okay and one of the things that everyone is talking okay we need more automation we need more better tooling and i think we are really fitting into this yeah and i talked to venture capitalists yesterday and today an angel investor best time for a startup is right now and again open source is driving a lot of value Fan, it's been great to have you on and sharing with us what's going on on the ground there as well as talking about some of the, the traction you have just final question, um, how old's the company? How much funding do you have? Where are you guys located? Put a plug in for the company. Are you guys looking to hire? Uh, take, tell us about the company. Where are you guys located? How much capital so, do you have? So, okay, the company is here for three years. Uh, we've passed A rounds last March, okay, uh, with Tiger and, and, uh, um, and Hyperwise Capitals, okay. Uh, we are located, most of the company is located today in Israel, in Tel Aviv but we have like great great team also in Ukraine and also great guys are in Europe. And right now also Crackbox joined us as an open source VP for, and he's like right now located in, in uh, New Zealand. So we are really a global team, yeah. which I think it's really helps us to strengthen ourselves. Yeah. And I think this is the entrepreneurial equation for the future. It's really great to see that global. We heard that in Priyanka Sharma's keynote, it's a global culture, global community. Um, right. And so really, really props to you guys. Congratulations on Armo and thanks for coming on theCUBE and sharing insights and expertise and also what's happening on the ground. Appreciate it, Ben. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, John. Okay, cheers. Okay, this is CUBE coverage here of the Cloud Native Security Con in North America 2023. I'm John Furrier for Lisa Martin, Dave Vellante. We'll be back with more, a wrap up of the event after this short break. <laughs>